If this is your cat, please message me. If this is your friend's cat, let me know. Message this to all of your friends. I really need to find his loving home, but here he is. Does anyone recognize him? Oh my gosh. Don't ever stop sending me crap like that, I swear. That cat is almost as good as the dancing hot dogs. Almost. She got a stomp. She got a stonk. She got a, she got a, she got a stonk. Now stonk with it. Go stonk with it. Get stonky with it. It is the end of the world as we know it. At least a world with, quote, no cisgender men. We're discussing Hulu's latest show. Is it okay for married Hollywood stars to do the schmexy scenes with people other than their spouse? I want to discuss what Nicole Kidman recently said about it. These two hot celebs are saying loud and clear that they are not a part of the not showering movement. And I'm gonna break down Simone Biles' reasons for being pro-choice on today's Sports Recrap. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Picture this. It's the end of the world, but the only people left are women. I believe that the future is female. Until you and all the other millions of women find out there is one man left. This is the premise of a brand new show called Why the Last Man Coming to Hulu. It's being marketed as a world without cisgender men, according to actress Amber Tamblyn. Just cut it out. Here's a clip of the trailer. Without a woman on the go. Wait, he's a monkey? All right, so you'd think with that sort of advertising, the Wokies would be in heaven, but actually, they're complaining. Nothing I ever do is good enough for this family. Having one last cisgender man in the world isn't good enough, because none of the women are transgender, duh. But if the premise of the show is that there's only supposed to be one man left on Earth, none of the women can be trans, because that would mean that there is more than just one man on Earth. Am I doing woke gender math right? Biology. I'm going to guess that the season of this show won't be very long, because if it's the end of the world and only women are left, we'd all starve, because there aren't any men to open the jars. Marcy, will you please just open the jars? Right. And spiders would take over. All right, kids, nothing to be afraid of. Yep. Say goodbye to the house, kids. I posted on my story last weekend that all I did was watch Nicole Kidman movies. My sleeves are falling. I watched Eyes Wide Shut, which I didn't like. Stepford Wives, seen before, love it. Secret in Their Eyes, loved it. Before I Go to Sleep, which was pretty good. And Rabbit Hole, which was dark and not in the way that I like. So anyways, I was excited when I saw a new gossip story about Nicole because she's one of my favorites. Oh. It's kind of annoying that you look like that and you're smart and educated and intelligent. Nicole Kidman was asked how her husband of 15 years, Keith Urban, feels about her filming sex scenes in movies. She told E, my husband is an artist, so he understands all of it and he also does not get involved. He sees the show at the very end when it's a show, all edited together, and he's fresh eyes. He doesn't read any script. He really doesn't know what's going on on the set. He's got his own career that he's completely absorbed in. All marriages are complicated. Here's a fun little brain puzzler for Christian conservatives, just because I think your answers will be interesting. Do you think if someone is acting that doing love scenes is okay, even if it's not with your spouse? Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. Now, I have a little update for you in case some of you bail out before the ends of the episodes. You shouldn't do that, because sometimes I give little announcements. We are trying to get politics to 100,000 followers. That means real, live, breathing human conservatives. When we needed to hit 10,000 to be able to do story swipe ups, you got us there. When we needed to hit the 50K milestone, you did that too. And now I'm asking you guys to help me get the show on Instagram, which is our main home, to 100,000 followers. Now, how do we do this? Engage with every post. DM to anyone you know who is conservative. Tell them 
them to follow us. DM the show to anyone who loves pop culture. Tell them to follow us. Text your family group chat. Put up a billboard. Get a tattoo. Whatever it takes. We're doing everything we know how to do behind the scenes, but we can't accomplish this goal without all hands on deck. Everything we do here in the conservative movement is a team effort. We're doing so much more than just reporting pop culture news. We're presenting conservative ideas in a fun way that young women especially may not ever be exposed to otherwise. So thank you so much. This has been my PSA. Let's get politics to 100K. Now back to your scheduled programming. I have another celebrity shower update for you. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. Don't worry, these are two celebrities who were asked about Showergate and said they absolutely bathe. Our boys, Jason Momoa and The Rock. You wanna do something gay to The Rock, like pee on it? You thinking what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. Momoa told Access Hollywood Monday, I'm not starting any trends. I shower, trust me. I'm Aquaman, I'm in the effing water. Don't worry about it, I'm Hawaiian. We got salt water on me, we good. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson also shut down the idea of being a stinky star on Twitter. He said, I'm the opposite of a not washing themselves celeb. Shower cold when I roll out of bed to get my day rolling. Shower warm after my workout before work. Shower hot after I get home from work. I'm sensing a trend here. Manly men equals squeaky clean. Beta boys are the ones who don't bathe. If you're some man Do the thing, win the points, it's time for another sports recap. EA Sports. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Today's sports recap isn't really about sports, just an athlete, specifically Simone Biles, who posted on her Instagram story during a Q&A that she was pro-choice while she was asking people to share their most unpopular opinions. No! No, you can't do that to me. She said, I already know this is going to start the biggest argument and may even lose followers, but I'm very much pro-choice. Your body, your choice. Also, for everyone that's gonna say, just put it up for adoption, it's not that easy. And coming from someone who is in the foster care system, trust me, and adoption is expensive. I'm just saying, foster care system is broken and it's tough, especially on the kids and young adults who age out. And don't even come at me if you couldn't keep a mask on or refuse to wear one. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. All right, so a lot to unpack here. The first reason Simone gives for being pro-choice is my body, my choice, a typical argument. But as I've said before on the show, and I'll say again, it isn't just the woman's body involved. There is another body with completely separate DNA, its own fingers and toes and eyelashes and nose. Your baby probably has a beating heart, you know. It can feel pain. And it has fingernails. Fingernails. Simone then defends her pro-choice argument by saying that foster care is tough, and Simone grew up in the foster care system. She did have a really hard childhood, but when people bring up the issue of adoption and foster care, there's usually a misunderstanding. Let me explain. Can you shed some light on the current situation? Adopting a child from foster care and adopting a newborn baby straight from a mother are two completely different processes. Simone is right that the foster care system is broken. However, when a pregnant woman woman chooses adoption. She gets connected with an adoption agency that helps her find a loving family for her baby. That child is not put into the foster care system at all. They're adopted from birth. Children who are placed in foster care have been removed from the custody of their parents and are first waiting to be placed with their parents again if their parents can straighten their life back out. If they can't, the child or children are then placed with other relatives first, and then after that, there is the option to be adopted by a different family. Adopt Options do happen in both of these situations, but they are happening in two entirely separate systems. Is that your son? No, no, I just bought this baby cash. Even though she spent time in foster care and had some hard times, look at the life Simone has now. Everyone will face adversity in their life, whether it be as a child or while they're adults. But being dead is never the better alternative, nor the compassionate answer. If Simone's biological mother would have aborted her, she never would have had the opportunity to grow up to become the greatest gymnast in the world. The foster care system has a lot of issues. I know, I volunteered in it, and I understand the complexity of issues facing it, but don't let that give adoption a bad name. And that's when to grow on. He 
P.S. The shoes I'm wearing are from Culture of Life. You can order these or other things from a 100% pro-life fashion boutique. Use the code Alex. Okay, everyone is talking about TikTok comedian Benny Drama's visit to the White House. One sec. Democracy's calling. <laughs> See you, Daddy. Bye. Hi, my name is Cooper, and this is a day in my life as a White House intern. <laughs> We did a joke. <laughs> but this spoof on that video may be the best I've ever seen. One sec. Communism's calling. <laughs> See you, daddy. Bye. Hi, my name's Edward, and this is the day in the life of a White House intern. <laughs> I like to start my mornings off with a little bit of reading. Hi, Jenny. I RSVP'd us for the Obama birthday bash. Yeah, I didn't tell you to do that, but let me circle back to you. We only injected 160 million Americans and we need every single American vaxxed immediately. Get Zuck and Jack on the line? Those anti-vaxxers are getting awfully annoying. Are you taking notes? It's all right here, queen. Good afternoon, POTUS. Wormlings, please tap the heart, subscribe to our Apple podcast, leave a five-star review, share this episode everywhere, and doing something different today. Comment your unpopular opinion since Simone Biles started the trend, but you have to end whatever you say in meow. Here's my example. Sundays are worse than Mondays meow. Now, tap save and vote for the worst unpopular opinion by liking their comment. The winner with the absolute worst unpopular opinion will be called out accordingly on the show tomorrow. Good luck. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Poplitics on Instagram for even more conservative content.